Last time we got our sprites and prepared our game sprites and also prepared these variables that we are going to use to control our game. So now here in our pickup puzzle, here is where we are actually going to control our game. So here we have these two variables, first guess and second guess. Initially they are equal to false because if we don't specify here that they are equal to true, boolean variables are initially equal to false. So here we can perform a check. We can we can say if our first guess, so first guess, and I'm doing this with an exclamation mark. This exclamation mark will make everything what's after it the opposite. And here we are asking if we did not guess for the first time. And here I'm also going to ask else if we did not guess for the second time. So practically, as I said, we are asking here if we did not guess for the first time. As I said, the exclamation mark is making everything what's after it the opposite. So if this is false, then the exclamation mark will make it true. So if we, are, if we did not guess for the first time, then we are going to set this to be equal to true because next time if we try to guess, this right here is not going to be executed. So if this is true, now we need to get the index of our button. And for that, we are going to use this right here. So here we are going to use first guess index. And for that, I'm going to use these variables. So first guess index and second guess index. So here we need to use is equal to int dot parse because we know, and if you watch my guess the game number, we know that this is returning a string. In order to convert a string to an integer, we need to use int.parse. So here I'm going to say int.parse and pass our, well, current event system, so on and so forth, which we saw is getting the name of our game object. And this is going to convert it to an integer and store it in our first guess. So again, if we did not guess the first time, we are going to set this to be equal to true because we don't want to execute the same code again if we touch our button. Here we are getting the first guess index by parsing our name of the button. And now what we can do is we can use our BTNs and we can use our first guess index and we can use that image. That sprite is equal to and we can use our game puzzles and we can also pass our first guess index and set that image to be equal to the image of our button. And I'm going to copy these lines of code here and simply change for the second guess. And second guess is equal to true here. And here it's going to be second guess index instead of first guess index and simply going to copy and paste all of these. It's practically the same thing, but here we are doing it for the second guess because, well, we have two guesses. We don't want to allow our user to guess as many times as he wants. If we don't use this here or this code right here, so to control the first and second guess, our user can touch buttons and execute those, well, functions. But now let us test this out and see if this actually works. So if I run the game, if I touch one of these buttons, we see that it automatically changes the image of these buttons. So we see that this actually works, but we cannot click anymore. For that, we need to write additional logic. But we see that this actually works. And now you understand why I named my buttons from zero up to seven using numbers, because we are using them as indexes to access our puzzle pieces. Now, how can we compare these two images? Well, for that, we are going to use these two strings. So first guess puzzle and second guess puzzle. Now you might be wondering, we want to compare images, but you're well talking about strings. Strings are characters. So how is that going to work? Well, here we are going to say first guess puzzle is equal to, and we need to get our game puzzle, which is our image. And here we need to say dot name. This is going to get us the name of our image. And then we are going to compare our names in order to check if our puzzles match. And here I'm going to say second, so second guess puzzle is equal to, and I'm going to take this one right here, and I'm going to get the name of those images. 
and we are going to say here for example this is just a short example so here I'm going to say if first guess puzzle is equal to second guess puzzle then here we are going to debug so not the decimal debug dot log and here I'm going to say the puzzles match else I'm going to copy this line of code and I'm going to say the puzzles so the puzzles don't match and we are going to perform a quick test so now if I run the game if I touch this button and this button we see the puzzles don't match if I rerun the game and let me check where our puzzles are so our candy zero is at the element zero and other candy zero is at element four so zero one two three four if I click here now we see the puzzles match and we actually have the same images this is how we are going to compare our images and check if we are guessing correctly in the next video we are going to create coroutines that are going to do that for us so if you like what you see comment like share and subscribe and i will see you in the next video